Hey guys, JNM here. Today I want to show you how to create the base mesh for the X that I sketched and used here as a reference in Blender. We will do this step by step and the first thing I do is to move this reference image a tiny bit backwards. So when I'm adding a plane for instance that we don't get any set fighting and then I start adding objects, I press Shift and A to add a mesh and the first piece I want to create is the blade. So I'm going to create a plane to start with. Then I tap into edit mode, press R followed by X and type in 90 to rotate it 90 degrees around the X axis. Okay, now I use the move tool to move it more to the center. Then I press S to scale it down. And when you go to edit mode and have vertex selection enabled, you can move around the vertices. I try to match the basic shape of the blade. And the next thing I want to do is to mirror along the set axis. Before I can do this, I have to set the origin and I set it to the active vertex. So move the 3D cursor to that vertex, then switch to object mode and set the origin to the 3D cursor. Great, and now I can go ahead and add a mirror modifier but I have to set it for the Z axis, not for the X axis. I also enable clipping and merge so that the vertices are merged when they share the same location. I increase the merge distance a bit for this. And now we can edit the mesh and keep it symmetrical. Okay, now I'm building the shape by moving around the vertices and adding new edge loops. Okay, one more edge loop I add here to the middle and then I move it a bit to the left and two more so that we can fit the outside of the blade but you see I don't care too much about the sketch because it isn't symmetrical anyway. So just try to line up with one side and see if it looks good. Okay, looks nice. Now I double click these edges to select them. Then I move them to the front. And with this I create the volume of the blade. Of course I want to have this on the other side as well, so the only thing I have to do is to enable the Y symmetry for the mirror modifier. Alright, now we have to close the mesh and for this I just have to extrude these edges here that I select now to the inside. So I press E followed by Y, extrude the edges to the inside and this is why I enabled clipping and merge because the vertices now meet at the center and are merged automatically. Okay, and I call the base mesh of the blade done and we can continue creating the next part, which is these connectors here. Well, these are basically cylinders, so yeah, let's add a cylinder. First I press Shift and S and move the 3D cursor to the center so that the new cylinder is created there. And I decrease the number of vertices to 16 I don't want it to be that round. And then also decrease the radius and the depth. And we can try the size. I go to edit mode and add edge loops. Just to edge loops and move them downwards to create this a bit thicker part. 
Okay, I want the upper part to be a bit thinner, so I select it in X-ray mode and then I scale it down. And then we can move the selection downwards. Okay, let's try this. I press R with the view snapped and hold the control key pressed while I'm rotating so that we can rotate in steps of 5 degrees. And now we can move it to the inside of the blade. Scale it a bit down and try to move it to the center of the blade. Don't forget to apply the scale when you scaled in object mode, because otherwise you could run into problems when sculpting. I enable the wireframe in the overlays now so that I see where the center of the blade is. It doesn't have to fit perfectly, but I try to align it to the middle. Okay, and I think we can go with that and reuse it for the part at the top and the bottom. So we have to duplicate it two times and rotate it. Okay, so I go to edit mode, select the mesh, then I press Shift and D to duplicate it. And again I press R to rotate it and have the control key pressed. So that I can easily do the same rotation for the part at the bottom. Which I also duplicate from the mesh in the middle. Okay, very good. It doesn't have to be perfect, because I won't reuse this as a low poly mesh anyway. Perhaps a few parts, but not the whole mesh. I will explain why later on. Okay, now comes the next part, the head, which is again a cylinder. Okay, for this I used 24 vertices. I want it to be a bit more round. Increase the size. And then move it upwards. Alright, now we can add some edge loops again to create the thicker parts at the top and the bottom. You see it's almost the same process for every part. We are working with primitives and try to match the different parts of the sketch and in the end we will merge these together. I add a few edge loops to make this part look a bit more interesting and scale them down just a bit. And I think that's good enough to start with. Okay, now this part here on the right, it's a bit more tricky, but can also be created by using a plane. So press Shift and A to add the plane, then go to edit mode again and rotate it 90 degrees around the Y axis. And I also scale it along the Y axis, I press S followed by Y. And now we have an object that we can move to the position where we need it. Scale it down a bit so that it lines up with the head. And I'll try to fit the size of the sketch, but I will align it to the head object. Okay, now we have to bend this and I'll show you a trick. 
I press Ctrl and R to add an edge loop to the middle and then I move this far to the right and with this selected I press Ctrl and B to add a bevel, move the mouse wheel to add more segments and then we have this kind of arc that we wanted. Ok, now to make this thicker, I press E to extrude, then S to scale it up and E one more time to create this border, again S to scale and one more time E to extrude and S. That's it. Yeah, looks good, better than the sketch. Alright, what's next? I would say the two connectors on the right side. And these are again cylinders with a lower amount of vertices. I reduce the size, the radius and then I move it upwards. And again I rotate it with the control key pressed. I scale it down again and apply the scale. And then I'm going to duplicate it because we need two of them. So I press Shift and D and move it downwards. Ok, now bring them a bit closer together. Looks nice, but I think I will move it more to the left. Yeah, that's better. And now it's time to add the handle, which is once more a cylinder. I set this again to 24 vertices and after that increase the radius. Now move it here to this location, try to make it fit the sketch and the head, try to align it and then I go to edit mode and x-ray so that I can see the sketch through the mesh and again I'm adding edge loops, scale them move them around according to the sketch. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it is just a base mesh so that we have something that we can start with. Now I rotate this edge loop and scale it up and when you do this be sure to have the view snapped to autographic. Ok, I think that's good enough for the base mesh of the handle. And I move it a bit to the inside of the head, because when I'm adding the details in sculpt mode later on, when I'm adding the wood details, I will do it for this part separately and when I'm adding these, the fibers and stuff, I don't want to stop at the border of the head. You will see what I mean in the next part. Ok, now the last thing is to move it a bit more to the center, align it to the head. And now last but not least, the spikes. And for these I'm using a cone. I think 9 vertices will give this spiky look and feel that I'm going for. And then again decrease the radius and the size. And then I extrude here a kind of border or bevel. 
just E to extrude, then S to scale, and we end up with a shape like that. Again scale and rotate it, and move it to the center of this kind of connector, Again, I enable the wireframe so that you can see if it is centered. Okay, looks nice. Then I set the origin to the geometry. And then we can duplicate it and move it to the top and the bottom of this part. And of course, Rotate it so that it lines up with this bent part. A last duplicate. Just move it a bit to the inside of this mesh, because when we start sculpting we are going to join all these meshes and then do a voxel remesh. So we have to be sure that there are no holes, that all parts are intersecting, and then we can easily remesh the whole X. Okay, we made it. The base mesh is finished. Some of these meshes I will reuse for retopology, but the other ones are just to have a sculpting starting point. Alright guys, if you like the video and my channel, then don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell to be notified when the next part is online. If you have questions, add these to the comments below. Follow me on my social media and I see you in the next one here on JNM.